Hey everyone, welcome back to Flight Level View. It has been a very long time since my last uploaded video. I don't have any good excuses. So, if you have any frustrations or profanities you'd like to share, please write them down in the comment section below. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to be more organized in this video by including an index. Firstly, I'll be talking about thrust, drag curves, and power curves. Most importantly, what thrust is and what power is, the best angle of climb, and best rate of climb. This is a very basic drag curve. Drag on the y-axis, velocity in knots on the x-axis. You've all seen this before. If you've watched my crash course video on induced drag, I know you've already seen this. The horizontal magenta line is your thrust available for a jet, not a propeller. This is the power curve. It's similar to the drag curve, but if you take a look at the y-axis, the units are different. Drag is in pounds, power is in watts or horsepower. This is a pop quiz for all of my student pilots out there. What is the direct cause of the aircraft being propelled forward? Is it the thrust or is it the horsepower? Hint, it's a trick question. Now, let's talk about the more commonly misunderstood concepts, thrust versus power. There are a lot of pilots out there that use the words thrust and power interchangeably, which makes me think they don't actually know what the difference is. Perhaps the reason for that is, is because power is difficult to visualize, whereas thrust is very easy to visualize. This jet engine in front of you develops 100,000 pounds of thrust. That's easy to visualize, right? Okay, this engine develops 25,000 horsepower. Is that also easy to visualize? I imagine most people assume a car being blown away by that 100,000 pounds of thrust from the jet engine, but what about the 25,000 horsepower? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? What do you imagine when you hear that? If you imagine the same thing as the 100,000 pounds with the car being blown away, then you fall under the same category of people who conflate thrust and power. Example number one. Guys, I have a rocket propulsor that develops 1 million pounds and it is attached to a 700,000 pound piece of metal with wheels on it. How much time or how little time would it take this rocket to accelerate to 200 knots? I'm just gonna say five seconds for the sake of the YouTube video. That is one, two, three, four, 200. Example number two. Same scenario, same questions, but now we're using a turbo fan engine. This thing develops 100,000 pounds. How many or how few seconds will it take to arrive at 200 knots? For this example, I'm just gonna say 45 seconds. Example number three, I'm using a turbo prop that develops 10,000 pounds of thrust. How many or how few seconds will it take to accelerate to 200 knots? I'm going to say 300 seconds. Our final example, the world's strongest man, is exerting 150 pounds of thrust against a 700,000 pound piece of metal. How many or how few seconds will it take him to accelerate to 200 knots? In pilot jargon, I think the correct answer would be unable. But for the YouTube video, I'm just gonna say a trillion years. Are you guys noticing a reoccurring theme or word that has been repeated for all four propulsors, the rocket, the jet engine, the prop, and the world's strongest man? Time. In how much time or how little time can I accelerate this metal down the runway? The more thrust that you have, you can accelerate to 200 knots in less time. Therefore, you have a lot of power. 
the world's strongest man is exerting all of his force on the metal object, he can't move it. Therefore, he has no power. Whereas the rocket can propel that metal object up to speed in five seconds, it has a lot of power. Back when I was a student, I had trouble understanding this concept. If a rocket were developing a million pounds of thrust, but it was clamped down to the launch pad and it wasn't going anywhere, how could it not be developing any power? I mean, look at the exhaust gas, all that flame coming out the tailpipe. The rocket fuel is combusting and spitting fire out the tailpipe. There is an incredible momentum out the tailpipe, but the body of the rocket is clamped down to the launch pad. It's not going anywhere. There is no velocity. You see, there's no power being applied to the body of the rocket, not the exhaust gas. Same thing for the 777. If you advance the thrust levers to full forward, you gain an incredible amount of momentum coming out the tailpipe. In other words, you get a lot of thrust and you have a lot of power in the exhaust gas stream coming out of the tailpipe. But you're stepping on the brakes. This airplane is not moving. There's no velocity. Therefore, there is no power being applied to the body of the 777. Now that you understand the difference between thrust and power, let's talk about climb for jets and for props. I have four graphs drawn on the slide in front of you. Two belong to the propeller and two belong to the jet. The top two are thrust or drag curves. The bottom two are power available or power required curves. There is a careless notion out there that jets develop thrust and props develop power. So does that mean that jets don't develop power and props don't develop thrust? Thrust and power go together, kind of like mass and weight go together. You can't separate it. You can't say, hey, I weigh 70 kilograms and I have no weight. Just like you're also unable to say, hey, I'm 150 pounds and I have zero mass. The exception being if you're in zero G or high G conditions. Same for thrust and power. If you're clamped down to the launch pad, you're not going to have any power. I drew the drag and power curves a little bit differently from the textbooks. I actually lined them up top down so the vertical lines intersect at the correct points. I think the misunderstandings originate here. You see, in the textbooks, thrust and drag are in a different chapter from power. Since they're located in different chapters, people naturally think that they're two different concepts. And yes, they are two different concepts, but these two different concepts work together. I like this top-down method of the drag and power curve as long as you align them correctly. It clearly shows that two different concepts of drag and power are related to one another. I guess some viewers might be asking right now, since they're related, where is the VX speed exactly? The thrust available for a jet is, for the most part, pretty constant and linear, so I would be looking to the point where there would be the least amount of drag. That is where I would have the most excess thrust. Your VY speed, or best rate of climb speed, occurs where you have the most excessive power. So same as before. On the bottom graph, I would be looking to where I would find the most excess amount of power. It's really interesting where it's located. If you notice the blue vertical line intersects the drag curve on top, that happens to be the tangent line that I drew from the origin point zero, 00 on the coordinates to where it touches the graph. That is where your best rate of climb is for a jet. I faded out the bottom graph because I didn't want it to be a distraction for me drawing that tangent line on the drag curve itself. If you follow that blue vertical line down to the power curve, it intersects where you have the most excess power. This is your VY speed or your best rate of climb speed. Same as before, but this time we're going to be talking about propellers. The only thing really different about these two graphs are the magenta lines. If you look at the top, the thrust available and the bottom, which is power available, they curve differently compared to the jet. Just by that, you know that the speeds are going to be different. I mean, the graphs are different, so obviously the locations of the speed for the props are going to be different compared to the jets. Just like before, I highlighted the power curve on the bottom and grayed out the drag curve on top. 
A propeller's primary reference is shaft horsepower and jets are thrust. I'll go into more detail on that on my next video. It's going to be specific fuel consumption and best range. For a propeller aircraft, you would draw the tangent line on the power curve and not the drag curve. And where the tangent line intersects the graph, where the vertical blue line is, that would be your VY speed. And it just happens to be your LD max speed. Your VX speed can be found at minimum power. That is where VX speed is for a prop. And I am absolutely certain I've triggered a bunch of student pilots and a bunch of CFIs. They're probably saying right now, listening to this, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. He's full of it. I've got my AFM POH for my Cessna C172 or Diamond DA40s, and the speeds in the manuals don't match the concepts. The best glide speed is not the VY speed, yada, yada, yada. I guess you gotta ask yourself, are the VY and VX indicated air speeds constant? Do they change with weight and increase and decrease of altitude? Yes, they do. What about your VX and VY true airspeeds? Are they constant or do they change? They change. But what's the reason for the change? It's not because the velocity is changing. That's not the important thing. Your thrust available is decreasing as you increase in altitude. So your actual best angle and best rates are changing. I guess the best way to figure this out is to take a bunch of measuring equipment and test it out in the airplane. You know, actually experiment it. I want to end the video with this. I want to explain or visually explain how VY speed gets an aircraft up to altitude sooner than VX speed. I have two airplanes climbing to their altitude. One is faster, the other is slower. Which one do you think will arrive at its altitude sooner than the other? It's an easy answer, right? The faster airplane will arrive at its altitude sooner than the other aircraft. If we were talking about the same airplane, which airspeed is faster, your VY speed, which is max excess power, or your VX speed, max excess thrust? Your VY speed is faster than VX, therefore you will be able to get to altitude in less amount of time. That's all I got, guys. Thanks for watching to the end. You know the drill. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you really liked it or loved it, write a long, lengthy comment. For my next video, I'll probably end up doing specific fuel consumption and best range for an aircraft. And if I have time, perhaps I could throw in a crash course video for my instrument students out there. How to do old-fashioned holding patterns in 10 minutes or less. Once again, thanks for watching.